Did you know the Colorado River Compact was signed 100 years ago? In that compact, it was said by the negotiators for seven western states that the river, which was being divided, would have a massive amount of water to satiate everyone's needs. But looking at the scenario a century later, we can see that the water is definitely not there. The area suffered two decades of drought, overuse of water, and lake evaporation, which has nearly drained two of the anchor reservoirs of the river. Lake Powell on the Utah-Arizona border and Lake Mead near Vegas. The change of climatic seasons is also adding to the list of reasons for drying up the basin, shrinking spring runoff that is very important for river flows, farms, tribes, and cities across the basin. And lastly, essential for refilling reservoirs. Now the question is, what is Colorado planning to solve the problem of Lake Mead? Hey there, I hope you all are doing well. In today's video, we will tell you all about the plan to save Lake Mead. The California Water Providers, in a letter to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, said that they have the goal to conserve up to 400,000 acre-feet annually of Colorado River water in Lake Mead, starting from this year which will continue up to. This water, which would otherwise be used by California's communities and farms, will meaningfully contribute to stabilizing the Colorado River reservoir system, said the letter from a coalition of some of the largest water providers in the state. The coalition is formed by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, the Coachella Valley Water District, Palo Verde Irrigation District, and the Imperial Irrigation District. Based on the statistics, we can tell that California is, by and large, the biggest consumer of Colorado River water. Some 4.4 million acre-feet are allotted to California every year from the dwindling supplies. The official announcement by the state was done months after the federal officials, which included the Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Camille Tutin. They asked the seven states which use most of the water of the Colorado River Basin to plan nearly 2 million to 4 million acre-feet of water savings. This initiative was taken to safeguard Lake Mead and Lake Powell. The severely low water levels of Lake Mead are a result of the 22 years of drought. During its last assessment on 5th October 2022, the depth was 1,045.3 feet. As you can see, it is at the border level. A minimum level of 950 feet is essentially required for the Hoover Dam to generate power. And if the level goes down below that, then the whole of the Southwest would have to rely on fossil fuels for the production of power. Talking about Lake Powell is at a depth of 2,000, 439.6 feet, or you can say that it is 24% full. The Glen Canyon Dam built over it supplies power to a large number of areas, such as Arizona, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Nevada, Wyoming, and Nebraska through the Western Area Power Administration. With its level depleting continuously, the dam's hydroelectric power has dropped to 60% already. Despite Teuton's demand and warning, which clearly said that if the states did not take action, her agency would surely come up with something. The pact to save water in the coming year did not take place. The states situated in the upper river basin of Colorado, such as Wyoming, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado, came up with a plan called the Five Point Plan. This plan did not glorify any specific water saving scheme. Two of the lower basin states, Arizona and Nevada, came up with a plan which could have curbed the water consumption by 2 million acre-feet annually. But due to some unknown reasons, the plan got rejected by Colorado and the federal governments. Toten officially announced the water cutoff for the states of Arizona, New Mexico, and Nevada in August. This was agreed upon much earlier in the 2007 interim guidelines for the river, as well as the 2019 drought contingency plans, which were set up by the seven states. Among the seven states, California and Mexico hold the most senior water rights. In the above discussed letter, they highlighted the state's water agencies have voluntarily conserved nearly 2 million acre-feet of water supplies in Lake Mead since 2007, 
that has added more than 20 feet to Lake Mead elevations and aided other lower basin water users from experiencing previously agreed upon shortage reductions that would have otherwise occurred as early as 2015. Arizona was allotted 2.8 million acre feet annually, which is equivalent to a 21% water cutoff or 592,000 acre feet. After the recent cutoffs announced by Tukin in August, the Arizona water officials said in return that it is very much unacceptable for the state to continue this kind of disproportionate burden of reductions. They also said that this was done to benefit other states who have not even contributed. Tutin, in that same announcement, said that Nevada would have to cut off its water supplies from the Colorado River by 25,000 acre-feet from its total annual allotment of 300,000 acre-feet. Mexico used to receive 1.5 million acre-feet annually, which was cut down by 104,000 acre-feet. We're already seeing huge pain and with 11 million acre feet river, that pain's just going to continue to grow," said Tom Bushatsk, Arizona Department of Water Resources Director. The Colorado River Compact and agreements of 1922, along with the law in the ensuing years, have governed the Colorado River supply that it would supply 15 million acre feet of water annually to all the enlisted seven states but the experts say that it was done purely on the basis of politics and economics, rather than a scientific basis. The current flow of the river is now estimated to be 12 million acre-feet in good times. California's usage of water from the Colorado River has been a sore point from the beginning itself. California is the largest consumer of Colorado River water, and it has been spared from all the water cuts. The reason behind this is their senior rights and they had been using their full 4.4 million acre-feet entitlement in 2022. The states from the upper and lower basin, except for California, combinedly said that this state should reduce its usage so as to prevent the river system from collapsing. The water agencies and state officials of California have pushed back on criticism by saying that they are not doing the needful to help the boy. Chairman of the Colorado River Board of California, Peter Nelson, argued over this that California delayed the current crisis by enacting voluntary deals. He also said that in the past seven years, they have saved up as much as 1.5 million acre feet of water in Lake Mead. They call it internationally created surplus water. He goes on to say that because of this surplus water, the lake has been helped to maintain its high levels and stay out of shortages, thereby benefiting the other states. The water managers from California agreed that they are fully aware of the conditions of the river, but their farmers should not suffer from all the basin's water problems. For example, if we talk about the farmers in the Imperial Valley, cutting off water to them may present a solution to one problem but simultaneously raise another problem. The main source of livelihood in Imperial County is agriculture. Therefore, the following would result in major unemployment in an area that is already deprived of basic needs. You can devastate the whole industry by making the wrong cutbacks at the wrong time. There has to be a consideration also as to how to prop up or maintain the economy of the region. Otherwise, you go from a very poor area to devastating even furthermore the economy, said Martinez. The Department of Interior has agreed to the deal which commits $250 million from the Inflation Reduction Act to boost the conservation plan and support Salton Sea restoration efforts. As a consequence of these efforts, a long-term transfer of farm water from the Imperial Valley to San Urban Diego, the ocean has been shrinking, exposing more and more ocean beds from where the harmful lung-choking dust flows into the region. This proposal by California has faced mixed reactions throughout the basin. Some say that the idea is really good from the river's largest consumer, while some have just thrown dirt on it. The Secretary of California's Natural Resources Agency said that the basin should continue to negotiate in the coming days as well, and should also take advantage of federal aid chosen for Western Drop Relief to stimulate water conservation. As challenging and as tense as this is, I think that there's a real opportunity and that failure is not an option, said Crowfoot. Everybody understands we have to figure this out, and we have some resources at our disposal.
Data from the National Park Service show that the net water loss in Lake Mead alone amounts to more than 6 trillion gallons. Because Lake Mead is getting smaller, Hoover Dam is already producing less electricity. The reservoir is expected to drop to about 150 feet above dead pool status, or the point at which the levels are too low to allow for downstream flow, endangering both power and drinking water. The moment of truth is here for everyone, said Christopher Kustis, a senior water program manager with the Environmental Defense Fund. The issues he added are an unmistakable signal that people, we need to fundamentally change how we manage and use water. Due to a century-old agreement among seven states that allocates more water than the river actually has because it was based on data from one of the wettest decades in American history, the Colorado River Basin is in a unique position when it comes to drought. According to the Interstate Consumption Compact, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, and potentially California will all see automatic water cuts on January 1st if water levels do not rise by the end of the year. The seven states specifically agreed to give up their water rights from Lake Powell in April so that the reservoir could continue to generate electricity. Approximately 162 billion gallons will be transferred from the Flaming Gorge Reservoir to Lake Powell by the federal government. Additionally, the federal government will decide the cuts if the state's party to the Colorado River Compact are unable to reach an agreement by Monday on a plan to cut water use by 2 million to 4 million acre-feet. According to Kustis, because most of the water policy in the U.S., particularly in the West, was created decades ago, when values and priorities were different, a future reckoning was unavoidable. We were always heading in this direction, but the effects of climate change are manifesting themselves perhaps 20 or 30 years sooner than they otherwise would have. Lake Mead is now a mere shell of what it once was, with its water level reaching a new record low of 1,068 feet above sea level. This lowers the previous record low established in 2016 of 1,071 feet. Lake Mead's water level peaked in 1983 when it was 1,225 feet above sea level. The most recent time it came close to that elevation was in 2000, when it rose 1,214 feet. Why is this significant to the country then? The nation and the world may be viewing Lake Mead as the canary in a coal mine. One could contend that the rising temperatures, greater evaporation, and growing demand for human consumption are to blame for the rapid decline in Lake Mead's water level. Water shortages across the western United States could make Lake Mead the epicenter of a major climatic crisis. Why is this taking place? The explanation for Lake Mead's reduced water level is complicated. The absence of rain is the first. An extreme drought that has affected the western United States for some time now may last all summer. Water restrictions have already started to affect agriculture in the area due to the demand for water supply in the area. The National Integrated Drought Information System of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, an estimated 81 million, as are experiencing the impacts of this year's drought. Each year, Lake Mead loses six feet of water due to evaporation alone. Although it might not seem like much, six feet of water loss is equivalent to 300 billion gallons of water used for hydropower in human use. As a common natural danger, droughts exist. One could counter that the accumulation of exceptionally dry years this century has made recent droughts worse. The growing demand for water puts an already precarious supply under even more strain. Western towns like Phoenix and Las Vegas continue to see population growth. We require more water as a result of growing populations for everyday necessities, agriculture, and other uses. Now that we have come to the end of today's video, let me know in the comments section below what you think about this crisis situation. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to like this video and share it with your family and friends. Also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon to never miss out on any new update. Thanks for watching.